Ladies and gentlemen, it's Hot Legs, straight from the Wine Exchange, with wine expert Kyle Meyer. Le Vignoble Bleu de Carmes Aubryon est situé sur le croupe de Graves de Bordeaux à côté de Château Aubryon à Pessac. Sorry, just doing a little boning up on my French. Uh, gonna have to know a lot of French this year because guess what's showing up? 2005 Bordeaux, the latest vintage of the century from this acclaimed wine growing area. And, uh, you know, we've tasted a bunch of wines from the vintage, and to tell you the truth, they ain't lying. 2005s are outstanding. What a year! And we thought 2000, you know, was all that in a bag of chips. And, um, and it was, granted, a lot of great wines from that year, but 2005 looks to be the, looks to be the trump card. I, I, you know, I've been doing this for almost 20 years, and I have not tasted a vintage um, this good, ever. That being said, we're going to take a look at the three early arriving Superstar 2005 Bordeaux that have found their way into our store, and hopefully um, into your gullets. They're going to need to. We're going to deal with three different appellations in Bordeaux today. The first one uh, being saint Emilion. Then we're going to move to uh, Pessac Léonien, and then we're going to move to Saint Julien. All three very distinct wine growing areas that all excelled in 2005 and made complete rock star wines. But then again, who didn't? We're going to start with um, a wine that uh, the great wine critic Robert Parker calls a sleeper of the vintage, the 2005 Belfont Belsier. Belfont Belsier was a property that, uh, like a lot of properties in Saint Emilion, uh, for a number of years produced uh, mediocre wine, kind of resting on its laurels. It was a Saint Emilion Grand Cru. The wine tended to sell out every year based on where it's from, etc. But uh, in 1994, uh, three gentlemen got together and purchased Belfont Belsier and decided to get serious about it. And get serious they did. Um, they did a lot of vineyard work. The vineyard, by the way, is perfectly situated between uh, two of the potential 100-point wines of the vintage. Uh, it is on the uh, Côte Pavie, which is arguably the finest piece of dirt in saint Emilion. It's a, it's a fabulous slope, leads up from the town of saint Emilion, And it's right in between the uh, chateaux of Pavie and the uh, Larcis du Casse, which both of those are in line for big digits this year from both Wine Spectator and uh, Robert Parker. So this is the tweener's wine. Belfont Belsier is the dirt in between. So it's uh, this wine should produce serious, serious, serious wine, and it does. Mm. The blend here is 70% Merlot, 20% Cabernet Franc, 10% Cabernet Sauvignon. Typical San Emilion area blend. Merlot is the, uh, is the main grape because of the clayey soils that uh, predominate in the area. A lot of vineyard work. Average age of the vines, 35 years. They have some hot shot consultants in on this one. Uh, Michelle Roland is kind of uh, helping them with the blends, in case you didn't know the name Michelle Roland. Uh, at, at work, we use the term, he's everywhere, he's everywhere, because this guy has his hands in so many of the world's greatest wines. Master blender, and it shows here. Fabulous sweetness to the nose. And when I say sweetness, I don't mean like sweet, port sweet. I mean like perfect ripeness of fruit, which escapes Bordeaux a lot of the time. It's actually a cool growing area, and in 05, you have this exquisite ripeness, this urgent cherry character fading into uh, a little bit of blackberry, uh, not as much current because there's a lot of Merlot here. You get like a dusty cocoa character out of it. Oh man, just makes you want to drink it. Mm -hmm. Belfont Belsier ain't never made wine like this. This wine's a knockout. Woo! But it's not a knockout because it's this huge wine. It's big. It has tannins. They're perfectly ripe. They're balanced. They're poised. It has fruit. It's not too ripe. It's just perfectly ripe. Um, it has that wonderful dusty cocoa character that you get from, from, from Top Flight Merlot. That's in there. This wine doesn't have any holes. It is a knockout wine. You can drink it now, which is what the Bordelais want you to do. You know, the days of aging Bordeaux for 20 years, they're they're kind of leaving us, you know, uh, with winemaking technology and grape growing and global warming and yada, yada, yada. You can drink these wines early, and the Bordelais know that, and they're heading that direction. That being said, this wine has perfect tannin structure, great acidity. You can age it 20 years. Drop of a hat. Superstar wine. Kudos to Belfont. Best wine you ever made. Thank you very much. Mmm. Now we're moving to Pessac. Cool story with this wine. Anybody ever seen Carmes Aubryon before? I know some of you have seen the name Aubryon on labels, right? You see the famous Chateau Aubryon, first growth, and then you have the neighboring Chateau La Mission Aubryon, which is uh, basically across the street. 
Well, you know what? There's three vineyards in this neck of the woods right on the, right on the border of the town of Bordeaux. Um, and the third one is Les Carmes. Now, Lake Carm doesn't get a lot of love in the press because Lake Carm is actually quite small. Lake Carm doesn't need the love. They, uh, they only make less than 20,000 bottles a year. That's about 1,800 cases, which is basically one-tenth the production of the other two neighboring estates. They sell all this stuff in a heartbeat. And the key is, they sell this stuff for basically one-fifth to one-eighth the price of Aubryon and Lamiche. It is the same dirt, I mean, essentially the same terroir. Uh, the Furt family has owned this estate for, for decades. And um, their, oh, their 2000 was exquisite, one of my favorite wines. I mean, basically, you had Aubryon, you had Lamiche, and you had Carms. And the same type of deal. You could get eight bottles of Carms for one price of Aubryon. So we stocked up on Carms in 2000. We're going to do the same thing in 2005. This wine is insanely good. And you get the classic Pessac nose here, which is that nice, gravelly, minerally underpinning, that um, wet stones. Um, but wow. And blueberry. You get this fabulous blueberry fruit character. This wine's actually 50% Merlot, uh, which is a bit of a rarity. Usually the wine's on the left bank of Bordeaux. This was the right bank. We're on the left bank of the river now. The left bank wines tend to be uh, heavier with Cabernet Sauvignon, but this, in fact, has a ton of Merlot in it. And uh, I like that. Actually, what does it say on the label? It says it in French. 55% Merlot, 30 Franc, 15 Cabernet. Mm. Now, see, the knock on Pessac wines is sometimes uh, they can be a bit severe when young. That gravelly, minerally character tends to dominate the wine early on, and then as it ages, that it mellows and the fruit comes up, and you have this uh, wine that's much more complex, actually, than a lot of its um, counterparts in Pouillac and Saint-Julien and some of the other areas of Bordeaux. This wine has a ton of fruit right now. This is a Pessac you can haul off and drink, and normally that wouldn't be the case, but such is the vintage. You know, the great ones you can always drink young, they say. Great wine from the Furt family. Once again, small production, only about 70 bucks on the shelf, and at $70, it is a deal. This is world-class, classified growth wine at, um, at uh, just a, a smidgen of the price of, uh, of its neighbors. Moving on, Chateau Saint-Pierre. Kind of like Belfont Belsier. It's a left bank version of Belfont Belsier. Saint-Pierre, for a number of years, made really bleh wine. Okay, I'm going to be honest, and I'll probably get like a, you know, dirty letter from Saint-Pierre, whatever. But for years, they really didn't make super stupid wine. Uh, the 89 was great, the 90 was quite good. The, but uh, recently, the Martin family, who's owned the estate since the uh, early 80s, 82 to be exact, got serious. And um, this 05 Saint-Pierre is a rock star. My God, what a wine. It's a fourth growth. It's the top of the fourth growth. You know, there's a classified growth status thing with, you know, Aubryon and Mouton and Lafitte stuff being first growths, and you have Laleville and said those guys being second growths. This is a fourth growth wine that in 2005 is, to me, almost a second growth quality. Amazing. 70% Cabernet Sauvignon here. Uh, I believe it's 20% Merlot, 10% Cabernet Franc, if I remember the blend correctly. Oh, man, what a nose. Blackberry, cinnamon, mineral, stones. Currents. The nose is just jumping out of the glass. Just this. Oof. Great terroir here. If that ain't one of the best bottles of Cabernet Sauvignon on the market at 70 bones, I don't know what is. You know, if you can buy one, buy one. If you can buy a case, buy a case. But get out and look for this wine because St. Pierre ain't never made a wine like this. And I hope they make another one like it again. It's a great estate that's finally making great wines. It's, um, it's been 25 years, and to see this wine come from this, this esteemed terroir, this great piece of dirt, is, uh, is fantastic. I mean, it's why we're in the business. There you have it. Man, three knockout 2005 Bordeaux. I don't know how much more needs to be said other than regardless of whether it's these three wines or, or any other 2005s you've been researching, get out there. If you don't have them already, buy them. This is arguably one of the greatest Bordeaux vintages of our lifetimes. Salut. <laughs>